Rashid Dele, hello everyone at Human Spirit in Israel. Um, I would like to congratulate all of you who are involved in this project. Um, uh, for all the time and for all the resource and for all the energy that you have put into this project and you have made a great amount of result out of it. Um, um, I remember uh, being there at your center um, when I was there last time in Israel and I was very inspired by the, pro the work that you are doing and the service that you are providing for those who are in need. Um, I think this, uh, this kind of uh, project is very, very beneficial and very helpful for um, countless of people in this world, especially in this difficult time of human history where we see so much of these uh, difficult times such as what we have gone through, uh, this uh, terrible uh, virus uh, that um, which has given pain and uh, so much trouble for countless people all around the world. And now we are as approaching a war in this world. So, you know, one after the other, you know. So I can understand that people have so much difficulty so much mental uh, pressure and due to that uh, physical um, problems health problems and uh, um, disturbed mind and uh, which is leading to a you know very serious result um, so i think we need to protect this world we need to in order to protect this world i think it is important that we should protect the people in this world uh, who are suffering and those who are in need. So that is only through sort of uh, training the mind and, uh, you know, to uh, take those valuable instructions from those great practitioners, from those great um, scholars and uh, put those into our daily life practice. I'm not talking about a religious point of view, but I'm saying whether it, uh, if, whether if it is a valuable instruction, whether it's coming from a religious person, whether it's coming from a non-religious person or a, uh, someone who doesn't believe in religion, that does not matter. But if we can put, uh, if it is relevant and if it is uh, something that can Mm, uh, bring about a happier world and a happier peaceful mind I think uh, it is worth it that we take it and put these methods into our uh, daily life practice so that we have a happier life and out of that we can uh, reach out to more people help more people even if you not if you cannot help uh, so many people but at least you can uh, provide uh, happiness and help those who are around you, your own family, your own friends, your own surrounding. Uh, that is also good enough. So I uh, do at this. I take this opportunity to uh, encourage you all to. Uh, I mean, I, I congratulate you all, uh, but I would like to con. Uh, encourage you for the further work and uh, you know progress there's no uh, limit so I think we can uh, keep uh, progressing and uh, reach out to more people and make this program more available for many 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 countless people so that uh, we can benefit more people and benefiting others is our goal and uh, bringing a happier world is our goal more compassionate, more peaceful, more love and caring, and more tolerant, and uh, more understanding. That is our goal. So I take this opportunity to encourage you all and 
thank you all and but continue to work um, you do your uh, great work and you have my love my prayers and my support um, all the time and uh, i wish you all the very best and uh, i thank you each and every one of you who are involved in this project the teachers the students uh, and uh, supporters the benefactors and everyone and uh, uh, thank you very much tashitele そう、こっちのじ。いや。いや。おや。だ、だり。あ、やてんぎ。あのて、イスラセサテラ、セダセジュ。ちね。あ、だんとぱてた、ジェルボチね。てら、ペアホレ。ロティ。テイザ、テラ
or people who are um, people who have harmed you or do harm to you, people that don't like you or that you don't like. It's actually most important to focus especially on them and and meditate on loving compassion and kindness for them especially in the way that i explained meditating on compassion and loving kindness before oh. focusing especially on them oh that tindri ani sanche duma janna de ke da ani oh devi po de ke dewa me ke tuzolla dewa do demba do duma do tawa de me che tuna no da so so se shu do she na dela haso Mm. So when, you know, having done that, having focused on sentient beings in that way and developed loving kindness that thinks may they have happiness and compassion that thinks may they be free from suffering, when you move to the thought, may I be able to do that, I will free them from suffering, I want to give them happiness. This is what we call altruism. Sometimes it's called the special intentions. Yentin, I don't know what translation you've been using, but it's that next step in the process, right? So I usually call it altruism. So, you know, when we talk about the, 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 the kind of compassion that thinks I will free them from suffering, we're talking about altruistic compassion. And when we think of um, I will give them happiness, we're talking about altruistic loving kindness. Oh, Tindji. Me chetuna yum sechu de leg de gala Ani de Chea Tab de Chayungre Tab de Kawayondo Din Nipa de Kawayondo Yon the Chayungre Tini Sanje sing it de Sanjana but Din Nipa Chasa So when you get when you get to this kind of thinking, when you develop that kind of courage, that courageousness of mind that thinks I will free them from suffering, I will give them happiness, of course what that courage wanting to do that then thinks next is I need the method to do that I need the means to be able to give them to give them happiness and free them from suffering and you think where do I find the method for that where is the method for that if I become a Buddha I will be able to do that oh. I will have the power to do that oh there is a depot so when you get to that thought, when you get to that way of thinking that thinks, I will, for this, in order to, fr to free sentient beings from suffering and to place them in happiness, I will attain the state of a Buddha. I must attain the state of a Buddha for this end. Then, uh, then when you get to that way of thinking, then you give rise to what we call bodhicitta, the mind of enlightenment. Oh, that's what you do. So when, it, when we talk about positive mind or good mind, that's the best there is. And the, that your altruistic compassion and altruistic loving kindness, those mental factors, those are the ones that give rise to that best of positive minds. And that is the need and the purpose for studying mind and mental factors. So please, you know, you've studied this subject, continue to study it, study it very, very well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, congratulations for your study, and I rejoice very much for all these seven years, your study in the Buddha Dharma, and uh, now, today, you are doing your graduation ceremony, and uh, fundamentally, it's kind of like a rejoicing for the, all these years. Uh, you give your time and space and energy, and uh, now, uh, this is a uh, from Buddhist point of view. Uh, this is a graduation from, you know, basically three wisdom: the wisdom of uh, understanding, and there's still you need to graduate from wisdom of a contemplation and wisdom of a meditation. Uh, so there's a still uh, uh, your journey is uh, not yet finished. And I, today, mainly, what I want to talk is to please continue uh, to taking the journey of a wisdom of a contemplation, taking the journey 
of the wisdom of a meditation. And uh, through this journey, that once you graduate from the three wisdoms, and then basically that, that's it, you know. Um, you can retire from the Buddhist study. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> so again, you know, your study, you know, Buddhism is a Buddhist practice, and Buddhist philosophy is basically uh, practice of the mind, philosophy of the mind. You know, so therefore, it's a really ninety-nine percent of the emphasis of understanding of the mind, and the mind have a conscious mind, subconscious mind, and so on and so forth. So. Uh, you know, conscious mind is just ten percent. Subconscious mind is ninety percent. You know, so therefore, there's so many. Furthermore, to export only the 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 vehicle or the the uh, method, ultimately, wisdom of a meditation is the fundamental. So therefore, uh, I will highly encourage uh, keeping your practice. Uh, meditation, uh, daily meditation, uh, and uh, <clears throat> the meditation which is kind of arising through wisdom of understanding and wisdom of contemplation. Uh, so these wisdom need to play important role for your practice of Buddhism, and and also um, uh, you know your whole study of a mind. Uh, 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 you know, ultimately, to not to just the dealing with the symptoms, but the root problem. And now, when you say dealing with the root problem over here, it's not so much. Uh, uh, it's some kind of like a Buddhist practice and a Buddhist philosophy. It's designed to solving the problem. It's not so much like that. I think it uh, need to come with a lots of enthusiasm. With the joyfulness, uh, wisdom with the enthusiasm, uh, compassion with the enthusiasm. Uh, there is some kind of lightness, excitement, uh, seeing the potential of the mind, uh, acknowledging the potential of the mind. You know, so therefore, this is a really the I think the important part. Uh, keep continuously your practicing. The way where you practice is not so much like kind of heavy and. Uh, and kind of like hardship, you know, there will be some level of a hardship, but fundamentally, element and a flavor of a joyfulness, enthusiastic, looking forward. Yes, it is a not easy journey, but that you're really looking forward. You're looking forward for your practice, looking forward to your meditation, and looking forward is not just to escape from that problem, but that there is a, some kind of like a hope looking forward because you feel there's some kind of hope, there's an excitement. Uh, somehow your gut feeling, there's a future liberation, future, your resulting refuge is there. You know, so that kind of like excitement and enthusiasm, uh, through this kind of like enthusiasm and excitement and uh, uh, becoming the fundamental foundation to your practice. And that enthusiasm and excitement is coming through your understanding or wisdom of understanding. You know, so that's really, you know, that under wisdom of understanding really kind of awakenings the imprints through the, your subconscious level and awakening all this uh, uh, ex excitement and enthusiasm tools to the potential of the, our mind. You know, so therefore, uh, basically, uh, please continue your practice with uh, some kind of like a joyfulness, and uh, uh, and then on. Not only that, you know, like uh, once you once we feel some kind of like an enthusiasm uh, with your practice, and that kind of enthusiasm comes through wisdom of understanding, and that enthusiasm comes through some kind of perfect uh, imagination or hope. And then I think this can really become not only yourself, but everybody uh, have a, that kind of like a potential. And so therefore sees a much more inclusive 
compassion, inclusive practice. This is something that you, uh, you'll you see the hope, for not only for your own self, but the hope for all your friends and enemies and strangers and anybody. You see this kind of potential. Because of every, every all of us carry, you know, we have a mind. You know, the so potential of the mind seeing is the ultimate. You know, so therefore, anyway, uh, uh, my request is, uh, first of all, I want to congratulate. Uh, it's a really, really wonderful. Uh, I rejoice, I will dedicate, and you also rejoice and dedicate, and all the teachers and the faculty who give their, their time and energy, I rejoice and I will dedicate. And, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and of course, uh, this practice, uh, this wisdom, uh, journey uh, should be joyful journey, joyful journey. You know, so therefore, uh, uh, midst of a chaos, but still trying to have a joy. You know, so that's I think the important. Uh, so mind have a potential to do that. Uh, there's a chaos, but still it can have some kind of like excitement and enthusiasm. Uh, so that's my. Uh, main request and practice with uh, not only hardship but the practice with the joy, not with the pressure, you know, seeing with the potential and and kind of like lightness practice, and so that would be I think a really important. So once again, thank you very much and congratulations for all your study and your practice and please continue to practice. Thank you so much. Uh, and the greetings and respect to each and every one of uh, uh, members and students, supporters, and of course uh, those uh, inspirational teachers for human spirit in particularly who inspire, who come together as a group, as an organization to promote human spirit of love, compassion, respect, forgiveness and uh, wisdom and altruism so therefore it is such a meaningful organization through venerable uh, yongdenla that uh, i heard that all of you are accomplishing uh, seven years of uh, cultivations of virtues uh, altruism compassion in action and uh, developing ourselves to become more beneficial more serviceable, more harmonious among humans and harmonious with the nature and harmonious with all the positivities. Uh, so I congratulate uh, with the, so much of uh, rejoice uh, and uh, huge congratulation, congratulations for doing so and for achieving milestones of seven years in one way is very short in another way is a very long time as for cultivations of virtues cultivations of dharma dharma here meaning whatever method that which act as an antidote to suffering antidote to the causes of suffering the delusion and the karma so that's what means dharma doesn't matter what tradition you're coming from what ethnic background that you're coming from what history what kind of uh, life history you may be carrying, whether you're young, whether you're old, whether you are uh, <clears throat> uh, carrying the name of a certain religious practice or not, doesn't matter. As long as it's, the purpose is to cultivate the virtue, the dharma, the greatest altruistic dharma, that as, as I mentioned before, you know, the meaning of dharma, the dharma, the virtue that which is not only uh, beneficial to harmonizing our ordinary life, ordinary environment, not only uh, bringing virtuous life, virtuous environment for this very lifetime, but uh, altruistic dharma is something that which benefits beyond these lifetimes, all the way up to our own complete perfections in such as uh, six perfections.
and that also solely for the benefit of the uh, rest of the numberless sentient beings, uh, uh, how tiny they may be, how distant they may be physically, how numberless they may be, uh, the, the altruistic virtue, the Dharma, that, bene- that brings benefit infinitely uh, without any bias, most effectively for ultimate benefit of everlasting peace and happiness. So therefore, even to de- able to dedicate even just one moment, or even when we are at the last uh, stage of breath from this life, even that very moment, uh, that very moment alone, even if someone have uh, committed, you know, immense of uh, negativities in the past, but then at the end of the life, even just for one moment, able to practice like that, uh, then of course he's able to practice whole life. Uh, then. Um, you know, I think many of you from here uh, in this group, maybe uh, some must be practicing for whole life. Maybe some must be practicing for 10 of years. Uh, but at least in this group, uh, who have accomplished seven years, is, is a huge thing. So therefore, I truly rejoice and I send my deepest respect to the teachers and to the organizers who make this possible and to each and every one of you that who put effort to do so. And I wish, I pray all the best for the future uh, programs, activities, and may you all, as well as uh, all the newcomers uh, in future times, whoever be part of the cultivations of altruistic uh, virtue and the Dharma, uh, may it ever progress. Hello, dearest friends in Israel. I'm so delighted to hear from Venerable Yontan about your success at your graduation from this marvelous program you've been uh, you've been you've been involved in. It's so fantastic, you know. So, what's the point of it? You know, well, there's this marvelous saying I quote it all the time that a bird needs two wings: wisdom and compassion. Now, as His Holiness Dalai Lama says, compassion though is not enough. That's what drives your wish, I'm sure, to do this program. Your wish to benefit all the suffering beings on this planet. But if compassion is not enough, what's missing? We need wisdom. So, what's that? There's nothing grand. It's 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 knowing your own mind intimately because we're all we're all just variations of the same thing we're all in the same boat you know so so the expertise we need to cultivate is is this knowledge about ourselves using these marvelous skills coming from this person buddha from two and a half thousand years ago you know as his holiness Dalai Lama said, it was these Indians even before him, these amazing Indian yogis and scholars, they were the ones who began the investigation into the nature of self. So taking this marvelous knowledge and utilizing the tools to help you know your mind intimately, to recognize what is there, to distinguish between the neuroses and the goodness so that you can move forward, you can become more stable and self-confident and wise. This is the fundamentals. Then you're qualified to help others because you're, you know, you're breaking down the barriers between self and other. You're realizing we're all in the same boat and now you're, you can have this compassion, which is the wish to help, but the power to do so is coming from, is coming from the wisdom, the work you do on yourself. So... Keep moving, please, people, and never give up, and I delight. So, my very dear friends and students, Antal, Edna, Eran, Firas, Iris, Ishai, Michal, Naomi, Neta, Noah, Sigalit, Simona, Smadar, Yael and Jonathan. So I want to say congratulations to all of you. You must be very happy and have a great sense of accomplishment to have successfully completed the first ever psychoanalytic Buddhist training program. So this is a historical occasion and hopefully you are just the first group of students to complete the program, and there will be many more to follow. So it was really wonderful for me to have the chance to get to know you and to spend so many hours together learning and discussing and meditating on the Dharma, and also how to bring the Dharma into your work as therapists to relieve the suffering of your patients So those times were very meaningful for me, and I had many opportunities to learn from you 
and the wonderful work that you are doing. So I would like to ask you to keep in mind those aspects of the Dharma and meditation that you found beneficial and meaningful. So do try to keep them in mind and in your life, exploring new ways of using them to help yourself, your family, your friends, and your patients. And as for those aspects of the Dharma that you found challenging, difficult to accept, you can just put those aside, put them on the shelf. That's completely fine. And maybe later you will be able to see them in a different way and realize that there are ways that you can use them in your life and in your work. So when I had the uh, Zoom meetings with uh, three of you at a time at the end of last semester, I was struck by how many of you expressed gratitude and appreciation for the Buddhist studies and meditations and how these were life-changing for you and have affected your work with your patients in very positive ways. So it was really uplifting for me to hear those comments. And in the last retreat that we did, the main topic was uh, refuge and the three jewels. And some of you may feel the wish to formally take refuge in order to deepen and strengthen your practice. So I'm sure that you will continue to find ways to connect with teachers and teachings to guide you on the path. But some of you may not feel the wish to take refuge. Nevertheless, please do try to keep the three jewels in your mind in whatever way you find beneficial. So for example, um, just knowing that there is a being, a Buddha, in fact, many Buddhas, um, who have infinite love and compassion for you and for every other living being. And they are there, ready to help you and guide you whenever you feel the need for that. So whether or not you take refuge, just remember that the Buddha is there for you anytime you think of him. And then there's the Dharma. And that is said to be the real refuge because it is by understanding and practicing the Dharma that we become free of disturbing emotions that are the cause of all suffering. So the Dharma is really the most precious object of refuge. That's the thing we really need to keep in our mind, in our heart, in our life. And then there's the Sangha. So traditionally, that includes Aryas, those who've realized emptiness, or monastics, um, there aren't so many of those in Israel, but you have your human spirit sangha, the teachers and staff and fellow students who have the same aspirations that you do, truly, sincerely wanting to help relieve the suffering of living beings as much as possible. So do keep in touch with them, rely on them, but also be sangha yourself. Be someone who can support others in their spiritual practice and in the transformation of their mind. So you probably remember the idea of inner refuge, how we ourselves have the potential to become Buddha and to embody the Dharma and to be supportive members of the Sangha. So I request you to please keep these things in your mind and Try to do at least a little practice every day, whatever practice you feel attracted to and find beneficial, whether it's meditating on loving kindness or compassion, impermanence, emptiness, whatever. So Lama Yeshi used to say that even just doing five minutes a day of meditation is fantastic. It is a way to help us cultivate our positive potential and to progress along the path. And even if you have difficulty doing formal meditation, there are many other ways you can practice Dharma in your daily life. Just being kind and helpful to others as much as you can. And I know you're already doing that. Living ethically and generously and so on. So I want to thank you very much for all that you have done and all that you are presently doing and all that you will do in the future. 
And remember, you can write to me if you have any questions or just to share a little bit about what is going on in your life. So I wish you all the very best in everything that you do. Thank you. Well, <laughs> hello everybody. From Human Spirit, um, you will get to know, or as you might know, Venerable Yunten has sent out asking all of us who have had contact with you to, um, yeah, to record a short video and uh, for the celebration of your finishing of the seven-year um, study program of becoming maybe the first uh, psychoanalysts with a really, really, really good uh, Buddhist, um, thorough and precise and well-structured Buddhist knowledge teaching that you have received. Now, I, I don't know if you still know me or if you know me anyway. I've only been there, I don't know, two or three times. So, But I really wanted to congratulate you because when I read that you finished, um, of course, there's some rejoicing, but then when you have to say that you rejoice and that you congratulate, there's much more. So thank you very much for giving me this feeling of connection. So you have had a thorough Buddhist education for seven years, probably better than many other people who call themselves Buddhists in the West. What you will do with it, this is absolutely and totally is going to be your own decision. Um, Venerable Yunten kind of suggested that uh, we should maybe say something about refuge. And I still remember, which it really struck me that you don't, you're not just taking refuge um, because you, you, it sounds good what the Buddha is saying or the, the Buddhists that you know, they're really kind and cool people. Um, some of them also are not, by the way, but um, anyway, most of them are. So... Uh, so he said that in order to take refuge, it has to be based on a good understanding of the two levels of existence, like the two truths, like conventional and ultimate. And then on that, uh, you study the Four Noble Truths, and then you understand that you actually are able to eliminate all your suffering. And then um, with, these, with this knowledge and this understanding, then you're ready to take refuge in Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. So basically, what, what I see is like, you know, when I sit down sometimes and I really very thoroughly think about the values that I have or the attitudes that I would like to have, meaning some attitudes or something that is there spontaneously and I don't have to kind of pull myself together to be generous, patient, nice, kind and all this, that when it comes naturally and when most of the situations, or at least in some, it does come very naturally. Um, so then I think like, wow, this is really what I want. This is, I really want to be able to live these values of, yeah, compassion, love, patience, connections, um, being relaxed, being peaceful, being wise, um, all these kinds of things. I would really, I would really like to be able to live them in a spontaneous way. So, and I know me personally because I've experienced it I know that these methods from the Buddha they will get me there and that more and more as I practice and I, I see how the mind slowly slowly transforms the more and more my my faith and my trust and my joy also to have these methods to transform um, the mind in such a skillful way to really be the person that I want to be um, that these method really works. This also for me, that's the best refuge. That when I'm not well, and uh, you know, sometimes also I'm not well, like mentally, and uh, but it is, uh, having these methods, I know is always something I can go back to, and especially knowing that at the base I'm okay. So that, but this okayness is just covered uh, with wrong views and the grasping at the self and all this, and just sometimes for me, just sitting down. And uh, trying to, not saying I can do it, but trying to meditate on the nature of my mind as being, you know, clarity, um, 
luminosity and spaciousness, just these, just to think these words and try to get into that space. For me, wow, this is so valuable. And so I wish you all the best and uh, thank you very much for having done these studies and being with Buddhism and, uh, and yeah, and maybe we meet again in Israel another time. Okay, bye. שלום לכולם, וברכות מעומק הלב לסיום תוכנית ההכשרה. אני לא יודע מה מספר האנשים שישתפו בתוכנית הזאת בצורה עשירה או בצורה עקיפה, אבל אני מתאר לעצמי שמספרם הוא גדול. קודם כל יש אתכם, את התלמידים, את בוגרי התוכנית, אז מעומק הלב, שוב, מברוק לכולם. חוץ מזה, צוות ההיגוי, המורים מהארץ, אלה שהגיעו מחו"ל, אנשים שעברו, עבדו במשרד, אלה שתמכו בכם בצורה ישירה או עקיפה, בני המשפחה, החברים כמובן, שהמטופלים שעזרו לכם לעבור את ההכשרה, וגם המטופלים של העתיד. אנחנו יוצרים ב- ביחד מערה גדול, רשת עצומה של אנשים שתומכים אחד בשני, אחד בשנייה. ולפחות עבורי, בתור מתרגל בודהיסט, בתור נזיר בודהיסטי, זה, זה ממחיש את הצורך הבסיסי שלנו לתמוך אחד בשני, שמונע על ידי אהבה וחמלה ודאגה לזולת, שאת כל הגורמים האלה אתם מגלמים בעצם במהות התוכנית. אתם עובדים עם התודעה, עם ההכרה שיש לנו יכולת לפתח תכונות חיוביות לתודעה, צדדים חיוביים לתודעה, להפחית את הדברים שגורמים למצו... למצוקות, לקשיים, לאסונות אישיים אפשר לומר, למצבי תודעה שמצבי תודעה עוכרים, לבערות, השתוקקות, שנאה, חימה, נטירת טינה, תסכול, ייאוש, הכרה בכך שיש לנו יכולת לעבוד עם התודעה ולהפחית את ה... דברים שעוכרים את התודעה ולפתח תכונות חיוביות, יריעה נכונה יותר, מדויקת יותר של המציאות, פיתוח חוכמה, פיתוח מיומנות, פיתוח של אהבה וחמלה וסבלנות ועוז רוח ו- וכולי. אנחנו עובדים מטבע הבודה. אני לא יודע אם בתחום הטיפולי אנחנו מדברים על טבע הבודה, אני מתאר לעצמי שזה לא נושא שאתם מעלים בצורה אקטיבית עם ה... מנהלים שיחות בצורה אקטיבית עם המטופלים, אבל אנחנו עדיין מנסים להאיר את טבע הבודה שלנו. שאומר שבעצם אין מצבי תודעה שהם קשים, שטבועים בטבע התודעה שלנו. טבע התודעה שלי הוא לא בערות, הוא לא כעס, הוא לא שנאה, הוא לא השתוקקות, הוא לא גאווה וכולי. המהות של התודעה שלי היא לגמרי נשללת, לגמרי חסרה, אין בה את כל... מצבי התודעה הקשים האלה, העוכרים האלה. יש לי יכולת לתת לתודעה את כל התנאים האופטימליים כדי לפתח, להאיר את הצדדים החיוביים שלה, ובעצם זה הלחם והמים, the bread and butter, הלחם והחמאה שאתם עובדים איתם בחיי היומיום. קודם כל מבחינה אישית, אני מתאר לעצמי בתודעה האישית שלכם, בחוויה האישית של חיי היומיום, אבל גם הדבר שאתם מנסים להקנות ולפתח, לעזור למטופלים שלכם, לקליינטים שלכם בעתיד. שער הכניסה שלי בתור uh, מתרגל בודהיסט, uh, בקשת המקלט, בבודה, בדרמה ובסנגה, אבל אולי בצורה מעמיקה יותר, זה הכרה בטבע הבודה. אז uh, אני רוצה uh, לסיים באיחול לכולנו, לכם, צוות ה... בוגרי ההכשרה, כל האנשים שעבדו עם צוות ההכשרה, המורים וכולי, רוצה לאחל לכולנו להצליח להכיר בטבע הבודה שלנו, ביכולת שלנו לעשות את השינוי, להפוך את עצמנו לטובים ביותר שנוכל להיות, ועל ידי זה גם לנסות לעזור לאחרים להפוך להיות הטובים ביותר שהם יוכלו להיות. אז מעומק הלב, תודה רבה לכל אלה שהשתתפו בתוכנית הזאת, וב... הצלחה לכולם, ואני מקווה שנצליח um, להיפגש בשנה הקרובה, בשנים הקרובות. אם לא בארץ, אז יאללה, בואו לבקר אותי באוסטרליה. אני נמצא כרגע במרכז שנקרא Chimbrezic Institute, זה הבית שלי ב-17 
בשבע עשרה שנים האחרונות, אז אתם מוזמנים לעלות על טיסה, לבוא לבקר אותי, אני שם מים לקפה, יש עוגיות במזווה, אז יאללה בואו. תודה רבה ומזל טוב. Greetings everyone, Shalom. I'm so excited for you. I want to congratulate everyone on your graduation, all of the hard work that you've done. It was delightful to be involved with you for a little bit of that time. And I'm so happy um, just thinking about all that you've progressed through and all the effort that you've made. So thank you, thank you so much. And to all the teachers and everybody that's made it possible and all the administrators, all the wonderful people that I met, um, just delightful. It was a really great experience for me and so hope it was helpful for you. I think it's great to think about and to consider going forward and in everyday life, what sort of coping mechanisms you set up as in a sense, where do we go for refuge when we have challenges and difficulties in our lives? Are we reaching for the right habits, creating the right patterns? So I think you've probably gotten a lot of information, a lot of useful techniques, meditations, skills from this to think about possibly exploring more deeply the qualities in those around you that we take refuge in, that we ask for support, that we go to in times of trouble. And what about qualities in more enlightened beings and in even um, things like the triple gem, Buddha, Dharma, Sangha? Have you found any better qualities or explored that to think about ways that that can help me deepen the practice and actually apply the tools that I've used that I've gotten um, in my own psychotherapy training and uh, in the tools from the Dharma aspect of human spirit program and things that can better benefit you, that helps you better benefit your clients so and all the patients and beings you interact with. So I hope that's helpful. and. I know so that when I really reach for something, when I'm struggling, that it is something that is going to fill me with more resources of authenticity and uh, more buoyancy to be able to best support those around me. So um, again, many, many congratulations and I wish you all the best. And I so hope we can actually be in person with each other in the near future and hoping everything will be peaceful in your lives where you're living and um, wishing the best of health and happiness. Okay, so um, greetings to all of you from Sean and me. It seems a very long time since we were with you at Human Spirit. But the memory is very, very strong. And of course, uh, we hold you in our hearts um, all the time. So we, we often remember our time there and uh, how much we uh, enjoyed connecting with you and working with the human spirit team uh, to bring about, to help to bring about this um, excellent program that you have just completed. Well done. Incredible, really well done. I really appreciate how you've had so much commitment and uh, how the journey has involved so much inner work um, as well, you know, with the very purpose of benefiting others. Yeah. It's really impressive. And hopefully this uh, synthesis of um, self-psychology and Buddha Dharma that uh, Renan envisioned um, has actually come to fruition in uh, your own studies and personal development. And we appreciate that you're not all Buddhist, but in a way you are. So it's quite an interesting uh, um, position that you find yourselves in now as you complete the course and go out into the world. Isn't one translation of Buddhist about being an inner being? 
Yeah, <coughs> that's right. As in Tibetan, it's uh, nangpa, means um, an yeah internal. Yeah, but with bodhicitta combined, and with the understanding makes, of emptiness. Yeah. So, um, Venerable Yonten suggested that we think a little bit about refuge in the Three Jewels and how that might um, be relevant to your going forth from your program out into the world to actually uh, work now. I mean, of course, you've been working throughout the course as well. Um, so I guess you already know about that, but um, I would just say in, in my case um, that to come back to the refuge in the Buddha, Dharma and Sangha on a regular basis um, grounds me and enables me to cope with so many challenges in life. And as we all know, the world is getting a more and more difficult place to be. Um, not least in Israel. Uh, we're always following uh, news and events of what's happening in your part of the world and it, it really pains us uh, so many things that we hear about. And of course you're, you're very close to things that from a distance seem painful, so for you it's very challenging. And of course for your clients, your uh, sorry, patience is what you call them, but anyway, same thing. Um, many of them are going through all kinds of difficult experiences, and you're going to be right in touch with that. And in that situation, whatever you have gained from Buddha Dharma is through the kindness of the Buddha and the, the Sangha who support you, including your various teachers, and... Um, and then the Dharma itself is the means for overcoming suffering. And uh, not just for oneself, but also for all beings. So hopefully this can nurture and guide you uh, through the coming times as you engage with different people who come to you and with whom you're connected. Uh, just as it has for Shan and me in our lives. So I, I just want to say um, I deeply appreciate the journey that you've taken, the, the work that you've done on yourself and for yourself in order to benefit others in a very deep way. I really rejoice. Thank you. Me too. <laughs> and good luck with your onward journey and much love to all of you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.